I think I'll preach. <laughs> Since we're in the Chris Christmas season, thank Tony for bringing me some more uh, cloths. <laughs> As it is going to be a nice day, but a nice warm day. And listen, I'll take it. I thank God for it. Guys, we're going to be in the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 1, as we look at part 1 of our, our, our sermons that's going to be geared toward the birth of Christ. Luke chapter 1. And I'll begin my reading at verse 5. And by the way, we're being joined also by Century Oaks. They're watching us on YouTube. So for them, for you, for, for Lamplighter, it's on page 882, and for Century Oaks, it is on page 1495, and for those that are just visiting the site, Luke chapter 1, <laughs> beginning at verse 5, amen? amen. And, and Luke writes here in verse 5, he says, there, there was uh, in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, the verse says, and, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And, and we see these parents, and, and as we'll see through Scripture, they're aged, they're up there in age, and, and they're also the parents of John the Baptist. And, and, and the reason why we're talking about him, because he was the forerunner of Christ, and, and he would be the one that came before Christ and was pointing folk toward Christ. And, and verse 6 it says, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, the verse says, blameless. And look, we know even in, in the Old Covenant, they weren't sinless perfection. They, they were sinners, but they were doing everything that God would call them to do in regard to the, the ordinances of the temple and keeping of the law. They were doing it, and, and it says blameless. In verse 7, it says, and they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both and they both were now well stricken in years. And so they were seniors. They were up there in age. I almost remind you of Abraham and, and Sarah. And, and, and it's amazing when, when God tarries or waits for a purpose. He always does it because he wants to make sure that everyone knows that it was him and him alone that caused this event to happen. In verse 8 it says, And it came to pass that as, and while he executed the priest's office before God, in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, it says his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And so we see this man, we see this priest in, in Zacharias, and he's on, on, inside the, the, the temple, and we'll see everyone else is out there praying. Now he's not in the Holy of Holies, but he's just before the Holy of Holies, and, and his ministry that time was to burn his incense, and it would be a perpetual burning. And, and listen, it would only happen to these priests, they had many of them, but it might happen only once in a lifetime. So it really was a privilege for him to be doing what he's doing, Everyone else is outside. He's inside. In verse 8, it's saying the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the, at the time of incense. Now, he's in, inside knowing no one else is in there. In fact, legally, by God's law, they weren't supposed to be in there. And, and, but look what happens in verse 11. And they appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And listen, we see God's messenger, that he appears, and we see also he's on the right side of the altar, incense, and where else would God's messenger be but on the right side? In verse 12 it says, And Zacharias saw him, or when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. And a couple of things I see in this verse, that the appearing of an angel, it wasn't something that happened every day. It wasn't an everyday occurrence, it was a special occurrence, and we see it here, and look, he knows or believes he's in there by himself, and, we, and he sees this angel, and, and through scripture, guys, by the way, we always see, when we see an angel, he's always presented in the masculine, and we see this angel here, and of course, fear would fall upon him, just like it would if it was you, or if it was me. In verse 13, we read, but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And of course we know that he's talking about John the Baptist, 
And, and listen, we, back in that those times, especially with a Jewish family, if you had a, your firstborn was always named after the father, but we see that God had already had an understanding in, in regard to what he wanted to do, and he's given, he's given Zacharias this information. And, and listen, there's no maybes here. It's not saying, well, we would like for you to call it. He's saying that this is going to happen, and this is going to be the name of the child that you're going to have. He says, you shall call his name John. But he's not done. Verse 4, 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, and listen, I love angels. I love God's messengers because they don't have a whole lot of time for yin yang. They don't have a whole lot of time for just idle chit chat. Man, they go right to the heart of the matter and they hit usually right in the gut. And they're not waiting really for your rebuttal. They simply go on and keep going, delivering the message that God would have them to send. In verse 15, it says, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled, look what the verse says, with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. So we see that this, this lad is going to be special, and we see also that even in his mother's womb, that God has already blessed him to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and, or, and as he says here, the Holy Ghost, and we also see, guys, that though he's not born, this thing is just happening, we know that this is a human being that has a spirit and surely has a soul. And in fact, he's been filled with God's spirit. And, and all those that say that, that listen, it doesn't matter it, it, before you, a child is born, it, it really is not a person. God says, I beg to differ. John the Baptist was, Jesus Christ was, and everyone else who's born of a woman has a, a soul from the moment of them being impregnated. Amen? Amen? He says, again, verse 15, For he shall be great in the sight of God, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And, and, and his, his, his calling is, is similar to a Nazarite vow. We, we, we think about a, a Samson and how he wasn't supposed to eat anything dead or touch anything dead. He wasn't supposed to cut his hair. So, so it's similar to that with John the Baptist. In verse 16 it says, And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power. It says Elias, and he's talking about Elijah. It says to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. And look what he says here. This is his ministry. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And, and listen, that was John's role, that was his call, and, and listen, even from inception, and, and look, we'll see later on that even before he comes out, he's ready to start that ministry even right then. And, and Zechariah said, and by the way, guys, God has called each of us to a calling as well. Not the same call as John the Baptist. But scripture tells us, even in Ephesians 1 and 4, that according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So, so even before this world was created, God had a thought and, and had a ministry for you and, and knew that you would be his child with John the Baptist's father or Zacharias' issue. We see that God has let this information be known for us, it happened in God's time, here in time. But he called us and chose us as well. In verse 18, And, and Zechariah said unto, unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Now, it would appear that this is a reasonable question. And, and from my perspective, it is a reasonable question. But for this priest, and, and listen, the way this messenger looks at his question, it, it appears he sees it as a lack of faith. In verse 19 it says, And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And listen, this messenger is getting personal. He said, look, God sent me here personally. I stand in the, in the uh, proximity of God on a regular basis. And he sent me here to let you know what God is going to do. Not to get your opinion, 
but to let you know what God's going to do. And, and listen, he names himself. He says, Gabriel. And, and, and listen, I love the fact that we know that, that, that Gabriel is one of the two names in Scripture. The other we see, Michael. And, and there's one other, and, and his name is Lucifer. But he's on the other side of, of God's dichotomy. So we won't even fool with him. And verse 20 he says, And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words. In other words, you don't believe me? I'm going to prove something else to you. It says, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And again, I love the fact that this angel, that Gabriel is giving him this information. And again, he's not telling him it might happen. He's saying that it's going to happen, Zacharias. We see in verse 21, and the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And, and listen, if you had had an occurrence to meet this messenger, you would tarry yourself as well. And when he came out, verse 22, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And listen, he beckoned unto them, letting them know he's out there and, and, and I guess trying to say things with his hand. But he knew he couldn't speak no way, even if he wanted to. And, and, and I would imagine, even if he hadn't been rendered speechless, nobody would believe him anyhow. So God has him in a position where he can say nothing until these occurrences with his son comes to pass. Amen? Amen. Verse 23, and it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, of course she did, and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days where he looked, wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And listen, she stayed away. She said she hid herself. I, I, I can only imagine that, that look, this whole thing, her husband's telling her this, and then all this comes to pass, and next thing you know, she's a, a, a aged woman and she's pregnant. And, and I can only imagine that she's marveling and praising the Lord and, and, and ministering to him in regard to thanking him. And, and it said that he has taken away her reproach from men. Guys, back in that time, and I would imagine even now, for a woman in that dichotomy, in the Jewish dichotomy, to not be able to bear children, they would some would mock them, some would say, "Well, what's wrong with her?" And or who sinned? Did our parents sin? And they would come with, come up with all kinds of things. And though she's up there in age, hallelujah, she's marveling at the Lord that their prayers were heard. Don't stop praying, guys, regardless. And also that God has created a miracle that's going to happen in the time that he said it would occur. Yeah. Guys, I would ask that you pre be prayerful with me as I preach around this subject. Jesus, the true light of the world. And Father, as we dive deeper into this gospel, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll touch and bless each and every home that's represented here and each and every soul within the sound of my voice. And Father God, many times we come out and we come out expecting and some are looking for one thing, some are looking for another thing. And my prayer today, Lord, is that you help us and bless us and minister to us and allow these truths to find this place in our hearts where it would do the most good. Strengthen our faith. Heal our bodies. Give us uncanny understanding in regard to not just the birth of Christ, but the fact that he died for our sins as well. As we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake, amen. amen. And amen. Guys, same chapter, verse 26. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. I heard that. Verse 26 says, and in the sixth month, now again, he's the forerunner of Jesus Christ. It says in the sixth month, and again, it's the sixth month of her being impregnated, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, this angel was busy that year, it says was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So this messenger is going, and he's going uh, six months later into this place called Nazareth. It says to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. 
So she's a spouse to him, and, and, and listen, and, and back then that was as good as being married, though they wouldn't have any relations whatsoever. He was her husband from, from God's perspective, and she was his wife. And again, Scripture wants us to know that she was a virgin. Again, verse 27, to a virgin a spouse to the man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. So we see though David had nothing to do with the Christ child, he was of royal lineage himself. It says, and the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with thee. And look, that's a good start. It's good to know that the Lord is with us. He says, Blessed art thou among women. And look, we see that God has chosen her specifically for a purpose. And by the way, just like he's chosen you for a purpose here in our time, it says you are highly, you're, you're blessed, uh, uh, blessed art thou among women. In verse 29, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner, what, uh, uh, cast in her mind, what manner of salutation this should be. And again, the angel comes, she's a wee bit uh, troubled. He's saying, she's telling her that God has her highly favored. And, and she's trying to figure this thing out, guys. And keep in mind that, that Mary was a young girl. She, she wasn't, tw wasn't even 20 yet, didn't have a lot of life experience. Surely didn't have no, a whole lot of conversation with angels, I guarantee you that. And, and so she's a wee bit upset trying to figure out what's going on here. In verse 30 it says, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And, and listen, he, again, he doesn't miss a whole lot of words. He hits the ground running and starts giving her some spiritual information that I've got to believe is turning her world upside down at this point. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Now, now, guys, put yourself in her place, not the men, but the women. <laughs> at, 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 at whatever stage you are in life, and, and, and all of a sudden something touches your heart, and you look and you're seeing this angel, and, and, and you, 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 you know you've never been with a man, and, and, and he's talking about you're going to have a child. And not only that, I already got the name for this child, and, and tells her that, that he's, her name, his name is going to be Jesus. He's not done yet. Verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give unto him, it says, the throne of his father David. So we see this child, he, she, he's already saying it's going to happen. He's already given her the name. He's saying that he's going to be of royal lineage. Verse 33, it says, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. So he's going to have an eternal kingdom. The verse says, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And listen, he lays all this down on her. Again, a young girl, not a whole lot of life experience. She don't know a whole lot. But what she does know, and I guarantee her parents have taught her this, her mother's taught her this, that there's no way that she can have a child unless she had been with a man. And she doesn't know a whole lot of, a whole lot of other things. She's not a worldly woman, but she knows that. And this angel has given her some information that she just is literally boggling her mind. And, and look, he's giving her other information after that, but she's still stuck on the fact, well, wait a minute, Mr. Angel. What do you mean I'm going to have a child? She's stuck there. We, we, she can't get past there. And, and listen, I can understand why she could not. And verse 34 said, then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come unto thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And, and listen, I don't know if he's made it better or worse. Because uh, he's, he's going deeper and deeper, and, and he's saying this child's going to be born. And, and, and not only that, he's going to be called the Son of God. And, and this young girl with no life experience, not really truly married yet, just betrothed, knowing she's never been with, even with her husband. And, and by the way, guys, 
The Holy Spirit had to deal with her husband as well. We'll see that next week when we go into the second part. But this same angel had to speak to Joseph in regard to, look, it's no hanky-panky going on here. That's God's son. Had no problems marrying her, making her your true wife, making it legit, but you will not touch her until after this child is born. And we'll see that next week as well. Because as, as hard as it is for her to, to, to realize and, 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 and accept that in her heart, it would be just as hard for her husband when she comes to him and says, Honey, I'm pregnant. And he's looking at her, but I've never been with a man. And look, he was ready to put her away privately. And listen, I don't need to get into next week's uh, uh, sermon, but you would have the same attitude as I would unless the angel calmed me down. And, and look, the, the, the angel gave her some more information here that, that's going to help her verify that all this is so. It says, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, verse 36, she had also conceived a son in her old age. This is the sixth month with her who was called barren. And again, she knows her cousin, she knows Elizabeth, knows her husband, knows they're up there in age. I'm sure she knows that they've been struggling trying to have a kid, and now at this point they probably have given up. And she, so she can verify what the angel is saying to her cousin. And in verse 37, guys, and this is key for everything he said to her. It says, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And, and guys, I make this verse my own. I, I take this verse and I, I, I hold it close to my heart. Be, because I know that in life there are some things that I've been praying for for a while. And, and I read this and it helps me to know, no, don't stop praying. If God has not said no, you continue to petition him for it. Because as long as I'm breathing and as long as God has not shut the door, there is still hope. We pray for our children, for our grandchildren. Because we see them going faulty. And many times it looks like it's getting, going to get worse before it gets better. But we continue to pray. Because with God, hallelujah, nothing shall be impossible. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody prayed for you. And, and listen, of all the people who ever got saved in, in the world, it, 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 the fact that God actually got a hold of this hard head and this black heart, it boggles my mind, which it keeps me praying for my loved ones because I know if he can get a hold of me, I mean really get a hold of me, then he can get a hold of anybody. And I don't want to hear my wife say amen to her. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> In verse, <laughs> verse 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And he's talking about God's word. And listen, the angel is speaking God's word. And it says, and the angel departed from her. And listen, what Mary is said and is saying in her heart that I don't understand all of this, um, Michael, Mr. Michael. I, I surely don't know why God would choose me. I, I, I've never seen anything what you're saying happen or occur. But if you said God said it, that I'm going to let God use me in the fashion and the way that he wants to use me. If he's going to take over my body and somehow create a child in me, then let it be according to thy word. And, and listen, let it be according to God's will in my heart and in my life. Guys, when I got saved, the day I got saved, God told me I was going to preach in my heart. Didn't hear angel didn't come visit me. He just let me know in my heart that I was going to be a preacher. Now, I couldn't see it. I, there was no way I could see it. I didn't even know what Christianity was. But God knew what he was going to do through me. And, and so what I did, I simply started hitting the, the Bible. And, and I started studying. And, and I started going to classes. I did what, everything I could do. And, and listen, I wouldn't even share that with a whole lot of people. Because a lot of folk who knew me when and, and knew my background would probably laugh. But God said he was going to do it. And guess what? One day, hallelujah, 
he did it. Because with God, nothing, mark that nothing, hallelujah, is or shall be impossible. Look at verse 39. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. In other words, I guarantee you, she, she couldn't wait to get there. She'd probably break in her neck to get there. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. So she greeted her. She goes in the house. She knows that uh, the angel already told her that Elizabeth's six months pregnant. She goes in, uh, Elizabeth, where are you at? Verse 41. And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, look what it says, was filled with the Holy Ghost. And hey guys, we know in chapter 1, verse 15, we, we, we know and understand from, from, from John's gospel, that, that uh, even from right here in, in, in uh, 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 Luke's gospel, that the babe was going to be filled from the moment that he was conceived. And, and listen, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. The babe leaped, and this wasn't no just kicking. The babe leaped so much so that the transfer from the Holy Spirit in him, it, it affected his mom. And, and listen, we're going to see her get some understanding and some spiritual information that we don't even see the angel never told her the verse said that 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 the babe in her womb uh, leap as soon as she heard the greeting from Mary and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost verse 42 and she spake out with a loud voice and said blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb and again, some understanding and information that she did not really hear from the angel, but she just had something from her son that's filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and listen, it gave her some understanding and clarity, so much so she felt free to simply say it, and indeed it was 100% true. And whence, verse 43, is this to me, that the, look what it says, the mother of my Lord should come to me. And again, from the Old Test or Old Covenant dichotomy, knew probably knew of some prophecies, but did not know that this was the one. But the Holy Ghost had blessed her and given her some understanding. And she's saying that God would even send the one who's housing my Lord to come to be and greet with me. She helps us to understand even more. In verse 44, For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped, he says, in my womb for joy. And, and listen, even inside of her womb, six months here, six months old in her womb, and, and, and listen, Mary comes in who is just impregnated, and the moment she walks in the door and greets her cousin, that John the Baptist who's in the womb of her mother recognized who that was, not so much Mary, but knew that she was carrying the God-man, Christ Jesus, and was ready to start his ministry right then. But it was not quite time yet. In verse 45 it says, And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be perform a performance of those things which to were told her from the Lord. In other, in other words, everything that God has said is going to occur. And, and listen, he's even made me a witness in an amen. -er. Verse 46, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit have rejoiced in God my Savior. And listen, she doesn't know or understand at all, but she does understand and believe what the angel has said to her and is getting clearer and clearer by the moment. Verse 48, And for he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden, in other words, she's talking about herself, how she's let him use her however he wants to. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. And guys, we are calling Mary blessed for being used of God. We're not calling her deity. We're not praying to her. There's not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit and Mary. But we are calling her blessed because God used her mightily. Verse 49 says, For he 
that is mighty had done to me great things. And look, holy is his name. Verse 50, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. And she's speaking about reverential fear because they, those who know him know truly who he is and that he is the true son of God. He has showed strength with his arm, verse 51. He has scattered the proud in the imaginations of their heart. He had put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them, look, of low degree. He had filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he had sent empty away. He hath, he says, opened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke, look what she says, to our father Abraham, to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Verse 56 says, and Mary abode with her about three months and returned to our own house. A couple of interesting things we see in this verse, guys. First of all, everything she's saying, she's saying hath. She's saying that it has occurred. And, 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 and we need to understand that her, along with Elizabeth, they've not had, had given birth yet. But they're calling all these things as if they had already occurred. That, that he done, had done this and, and, and that he has a, 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 a mercy on them from that fear him, that, that he has showed strength with his arms. And look, none of this has occurred from, from the eternal. And because of the blessings of the Lord, she's able to quote these things as if it is already done. Because the angel said it is. And from the eternal, man, this thing has already been taken care of. Amen. Look at verse, I'm sorry, let's go from here to chapter 2 of this great epistle. Chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree. Look, we'll see God's hand working here, guys, from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And so we see God's plan playing out, laid out long even before this world was created. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. And, and guys, again, we see God's hand playing out. And, and, and he always amazes me how he works things out. That guys, you're here this morning because God called you a long time ago and knew exactly where you would be and what you would be doing, called you to himself, even called your birth, natural birth, and then your rebirth, and through the annals of time knew that you would be right here at this place called Lamplighter celebrating, hallelujah, and remembering the birth of the Lord on this day. In every aspect of everybody's life, God has already has orchestrated and knows how to work and where it's going to be and how it's going to work out. And even for the Christ child, because scripture says, in fact, Micah 5 and 2 says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come for, the, uh, for unto me. That is to be the ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. And listen, God's prophet Micah wrote that years and years before all this occurred. And it wasn't that guy was scrambling, well, how are we going to get uh, Joseph to take the babe uh, uh, to, Drew, uh, 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 to, to Bethlehem? How we now already worked out, and you're here because God has worked some things out in your life as well for the purposes of him and always for our good and ultimately for his glory which is why the scripture says in all things we need to give him glory amen, amen. amen.
The verse says in verse 5, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. So we see here she's very pregnant. And they had to travel a good ways, probably about 70 miles if you were to, to figure it out. Verse 6 says, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And of course it wouldn't happen until it was supposed to happen. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And, and listen, back then, and, and I think they stopped it around the 17th century or so, but, but they would take uh, uh, rags or clothes or cloths and they would wrap, literally wrap a child up in them where almost like he couldn't move and they would call that swaddling. And, and I guess it kept him from falling or whatever it did, but for whatever reason they stopped the practice. And that's what he's talking about here. Wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. And, and by the way, a manger is a feeding trough in case you don't know. Looks real good on your lawn because yours is cleaned up. <laughs> but that's all it actually was. It said because there was no room for them in the inn. And years ago when I was a child or a youngster, you probably saw it as well, they used to have some kind of animation kind of thing. And every year they would play this. And it was like a play with these animation things. And they would play out everything that we're reading here in regard to the birth, the birth of Christ. And, and, and they had a little little man would be in the end. He'd go away, go away, leave me in my corner in peace. And, and, and they would do all this. I guess, I guess you would never see that now on regular TV. But everyone knew about what we're reading now. And, and I would imagine that not too many folk look at this apart from Christians anymore. Just a thought. Something came to mind. It says in verse 7, And, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, uh, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And, and, and guys, we know with sheep, you got to watch them all the time. And, and shepherds, folk look on them. They didn't look kindly on them. They, 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 first of all, they worked with sheep all the time. And sheep have an odor, and because they was with these sheep all the time, they kind of had an odor as well. A, a lot of guys that work with animals or horses or something like that, a lot of times that smell gets in the clothes. And, and, and so when they would, a shepherd would come into town or something, they knew it because they would smell them before they actually would see them. And, and so they were considered the lower rung of, of society for that reason and for other reasons as well. It says, and they were, verse 8, in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. Again, the messenger. And, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And listen, every time we see the entrance of God's messenger, we see this fear. And they always get calmed down. Verse 10, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to look all people. And, and guys, we see that, they, that the, the messenger is coming to the lower rung of the folk in regard to the shepherds. And he's telling them this, this good, good news is going to be for all people. Well, next week we'll look at the wise men, but they're not here right now. Simply the shepherds. And it says in verse 11, For unto you is born this day in the, in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, laying in the manger. So he's telling them where they're going to find him or how he'll be when they get there. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. And listen, he's talking about peace and not that we're going to all walk around or if they were all going to walk around holding hands, singing Kumbaya because it's so peaceful, but they, the Prince of Peace was coming into the world and those that would relate to him, those that would receive him would have the peace, the peace of God regardless of what's going on around them. In verse 15 it says, And it came to pass 
as the angels were gone from them in the heaven, the, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And, and listen, he sent his messengers, surely went to the shepherds first, and because he did, they said, we got to go and see what's going on here. Let's go check this out. Verse 16, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe laying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad, the verse says, the saying which was told them concerning the child. So in everything that, that listen, the messenger told them, they passed it on. Even when they went to see the child, they had to tell someone. And it's amazing that once you meet or see Jesus, it's hard to keep him to yourself. In verse 18 it says, And all they that heard, uh, all they that heard, it says, it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And verse 19 says, But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And guys, you talk about a whirlwind romance. This is a whirlwind childbearing young girl who in the last year has gone through some things. She's had some audience with the angel. She's had some time with her cousin. She's seen the miraculous through her and surely seen the miraculous through herself. And she's still trying to ponder all this. And, and listen, folk are coming. The shepherds are coming. And, and listen, they're, they're, they're saying, oh, oh you're, you're great in, in the eyes of God because he, he has saw you and, and, and has used you. And, and they're praising her child. And she don't know what to do with all this. And the verse says that she pondered these things. Hallelujah. Privately, I might add, in her heart. In verse 20 it says, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen and was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called, guess what? Jesus, which was so called or so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And of course the angel said it, and they were obedient to his request. Verse 22, and when the days of her purification, according to the law, and listen, she would be considered after childbirth uh, uh, unclean for 40 days. It says purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man, look what it says, was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Now Simeon, Simeon was a, 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 a Jewish man, he was a devout Jewish man, but, and he knew of the Christ child. In fact, it says that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and, and he knew that the consolation of Israel would be the birth of, child, of Christ, that he would con, uh, uh, console them. It says, and the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he's waiting. Verse 27. And he came by spirit into the temple. Spirit led him there. The verse says, And when the parents brought in the child, or brought the child Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, they then took him up, I'm sorry, then took he him up in his arms, and blessed God, and said, Lord now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. And listen, what Simeon is saying, I've seen the consolation of the Lord. I've seen the Christ child. And now I'm ready to go home literally in peace. Not to his house here on earth, but his house in heaven. 
for mine eyes, verse 30 says, have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. So he's not just talking about Israel, he's talking about the Gentiles as well. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them, and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set, look what he says, for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And listen, he has just seen the born or the birth of the Christ child, but he's already prophesying that he come to earth to be killed for our sins and for their sins as well. And, and even prophesied that a, a sword is going to be going through the hearts of, of his mother and of, his, of, of Joseph. When he gets killed, it's going to be as if they were killed as well. But we know that Christ came to earth for that purpose. Here, he's a child. Here, he's a babe. Here, in this time, God has called him to come and to be. But guys, please know, and we're going to look at some more verses next week, that though he was born in a miraculous way, though surely, historically, this is a fact, please know that now and forevermore, he is not Mary's little baby anymore. And my prayer, and I believe God's prayer, is that we have received him as Lord and Savior for the salvation of our souls, for the forgiveness of our sins. This is a time set aside that we remember the birth of Jesus Christ. And we ought to know, and we ought to remember. But please know in your heart of hearts that he is not Mary's little baby anymore. Amen? Amen. Let us bow and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the blessing and the privilege of looking in your truth. And Father God, allowing your spirit to take us to where we need to go in regard to clarity, also in regard to understanding. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll continue to minister and bless to each and every one within the sound of my voice. Father God, no matter what they may be going through, that we remember to keep Christ in every aspect of our Christmas celebration. And Father, I pray that it's infectious, that as we say Merry Christmas, that as we remember Christ in our Christmas, that others will also hear and see what we do and grab a hold to this Christ child who is now born a grown man, who has now died on a cross, who has risen up by God and is now at the right hand to God in heaven. Father, we thank you for the beautiful weather. We thank you for each and every soul that has able to come out. And we pray even next week that the weather will be that much nicer and that you'll bring even that meant much more people out. Father God, allow your will to be done. Allow us to continue to speak and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to whom we pray with much thanksgiving as we say amen. amen. And now guys, I'm going to do something. I don't even know if I ought to do it, but I'm going to do it. Silent Night, the first verse. Please sing along with me. Silent Night Oh
God bless you guys. Thank you. We're going on the road.